My question is this. What advice can you give, for instance, to our Minister of Education, but also of the Ministers of Culture in our European community, to change this very dangerous situation? I think, first of all, I have to compliment you. I think this is a, was a very clear diagnosis of the problem. <laughs> but I think you have the wrong doctor in mind. <laughs> I don't think you have to go to the Ministry of Culture. You have to go to the Ministry of Education and so that in the schools you learn about these things. But it will not happen. It's not happening. It's not happening. But there's, there's you know, uh, there are many aspects. It's not a question of is it important, you know, and in what way is it important. It's also the fact that the human being is an animal that needs variety but also needs familiarity. And if you are familiar with music, if you listen to music when you are very young, when you are a child, then you get used to it. It's very difficult. This is the same problem of contemporary music. Why is it that music that has been written 100 years ago, I just conducted last week a whole cycle of, with works of Schoenberg in London and in Paris. And you should have seen the, you know, the, the things that people said. And they were very happy. And thing, but they talk about this was a great adventure in modern music. Most of the pieces were written between 1908 and 1928. So what, why is it? Why is Schoenberg still inaccessible? Why is Schoenberg still uh, uh, thought of as modern music? Because it was never part of the regular repertoire of the orchestras. Therefore, the musicians themselves don't have the necessary familiarity to it, with it as they do with the works that were written only 30 or 40 years earlier, like the symphonies of Brahms. You know, you, you never see a musician in a first class orchestra who has a few bars rest counting the beats, you know, one, two, three, two, ah, and then play in a Brahms symphony because they know the pieces. They are familiar with it. They are familiar not only with their part, but what everybody else is playing. But with the Schoenberg pieces, you know, when do I come in? <gasps> <laughs> and therefore, familiarity is not there already in the performance. And on top of it, it's played very rarely. This is why it is a vicious circle. This is, they're played so seldom, therefore they learn it in order to play it on this particular Thursday of this week and they don't play it for another 17 years. And of course, the next time is probably somebody else, and if it's the same person, he's already forgotten it. And therefore, the audience also doesn't get the familiarity, because it, does, it doesn't hear it often enough. But uh, uh, familiarity is a very important aspect of enjoyment and of in the attitude of wanting to do something or, or experience something in life. And this is why there is no shortcut that you really, if you want people to go to the concert hall or to the opera houses when they are 25 and when they are 30, instead of starting to go at 45, you have to really make them used to hearing music and being familiar, not only with the pieces, but with the act of listening uh, to music already from a very early age. You know, I got into a lot of trouble one day when I was music director in Chicago, and I was go asked to go for dinner with some potential contributors, so fundraising. So 
I went, very nice people, and they asked me something similar to what you, what you just said now. And I said to them, I said, look, I said, you have to just imagine a child being born somewhere in Chicago. Doesn't matter if it's in a rich neighborhood or in a poor, a child being born somewhere in Chicago. No music at home. No music is being played. Nobody sings, nothing. He doesn't, the child doesn't hear any music at all. Then he goes to kindergarten. No music whatsoever. Then he goes to school. He studies, he's a good student. No music, never heard anything, never heard anything. finishes school with quite good notes, goes to a good university in America and comes back and becomes a lawyer or a doctor in Chicago. And he marries a beautiful American blonde and they have two lovely children. And now he's 28, 29, 32. And he is considered one of the best lawyers and doctors in Chicago. And he goes to dinner with some friends and I said to them, to this restaurant, what a lovely restaurant, it was a wonderful restaurant. And then somebody says to him, do you ever go to the Chicago Symphony Orchestra? And he says, Chicago Symphony, what is that? <laughs> they said, Chicago Symphony Orchestra is an orchestra. It is the best orchestra in the world. You know, there's nothing like it in the world. The best orchestra in the world. You should go. You'll love it. And it will be good for you to be seen there. And this very famous doctor or lawyer of 32 comes the next week to the Chicago Symphony and hears me conduct the Schoenberg Variations for Orchestra. <laughs> what can he get out of it? And we didn't get any money from them, obviously. <laughs>